All right, we are live, and I'm excited to introduce you all to today's guest. On today's episode, I interview a longtime educator and coach who is now the director of education at Therabody. Prior to joining Therabody in December, he was a former director of fitness operations at Onnit, as well as a longtime employee of Gold's Gym. Welcome to the winner circle, Tori Hale. Thanks, Derek. Glad to be here, man. Glad to have you on. And prior to I hit record, um, we're just kind of talking about the chaos in the world this past year. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty, negativity going on, and that's the opposite of this conversation that I want to have, which will be very positive, uplifting, and inspiring. So let's start with a very positive question to begin. Tori Hale, what do you love about your world right now? Hmm, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think the bag is kind of still mixed on remote work. You know, a lot of people are just like miss the human interaction, want to go into their offices and they miss that. And I understand that from uh, many different points of view. One of those being like, you know, busy households with kids and wives and you're trying to work remote in that type of atmosphere. I can see how that would be much more challenging, but me being a, you know, single guy living in Austin, Texas. I enjoy the remote work and the ability to kind of set my own schedule and, and create the routine that's really best for me and get to experiment with that. Um, that's not to say that I don't start, you know, work at a consistent time each day and making sure that I'm getting my tasks done and also end at a pretty consistent time. But just being able to just even like go sit on the balcony for a call or something like that and enjoy the sunlight or go for a walk in between calls and go play with my dog. Uh, this morning, I was able to go for a hike with some friends here. So it's just like, I've really enjoyed this the, finding the smaller things that I've always enjoyed anyway, but just really, I think enjoying them more fully, right? There's, we, we, try, we tend to take the small things for granted, which are usually the biggest moments of our joy when we look back on our lives and wait for the, these big moments. And with the pandemic, you don't really get that chance to travel and make these big moments. You get to have cherish their small moments and either you can cherish it or make it, you know, something that's like kind of something you dread, but I've really cherished that. And I'm really loving that about the world that, that I'm living in and like the atmosphere and the people that I've kind of put myself into and surrounded myself with coming back to Austin, which is a place that I really enjoy being. Um, I was, you know, moved here back here in the middle of the pandemic. So I moved back here in September and it's been such a blessing to be back. And very grateful for that. And that's really helped spark the love of the world that I've been able to create and be in right now. Mm -hmm. Right on. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah. So as the listeners get to know who you are, I feel one way that they can get to know that is by hearing your mission, just as all companies have missions that act as their guiding star in what they do in all arms of their business. We as individuals, I believe, ought to be aware of our mission something that um, is our guiding light in our profession and professional work, our personal work and everywhere in between. So, and it's always changing, but right here, right now, what is your current mission here in this reality plane, Tori? My current mission right now is to help people feel and be more well. I want them to continually find the things that help drive them to not just sit in that pool of negativity you said that you know you started this by saying we want to avoid that negative um atmosphere that's kind of in the world right now and unfortunately it's spread a lot more i think because of what the world what the world is going through and i think some people are coming out stronger and some people are going to coin, going to come out a little bit more confused and or sad and or less well overall whether that's mind body spirit whatever it may be and for me, it's really expanded into helping people become more well and take actions in their lives to become more well in mind, body, and spirit. And I think it's important to also touch on, for me, it's been like an evolution, and I know we'll probably get into that, of not just being mind, body, spirit. It used to just be more body. You know, I came from being a personal trainer, and that was part of where I started, and it was just more fitness, fitness, fitness. But the more I get into it, it's more mindset. And if your spirit's not fed, you can have a great mindset and your body can be in physical shape, but then you can still be very depressed and not being fulfilled in your life. So I think 
they're all interconnected, but you also have to make sure that each bucket is full for each, for everything to be whole and for you to feel like you are in a state of wellness. So Absolutely. I want to help educate and inspire others to help be more well. And I like to try and lead by an example. And right now put together education that can help inspire others to be the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you are now the director of education at Theravadi. Um, yeah. So they also have a mission. What is the mission of Therabody and what do you hope to accomplish in your new role with them? So the mission of Therabody is actually to help people feel better naturally. So we want to help. We don't want to do it through anything artificial. Obviously, the fact that the Theragun is made, it's man-made, but it's just a combination of, of factors that have been utilized over the centuries. You know, as soon as you hit your arm on something, if your muscle's tight, you put pressure on it. Like that's something you just instinctively do. Or vibration is just like, you know, rubbing it to help that soreness go away. You know, like if you remember as a kid, your mom might say you that. It's like, oh, just rub it away. And it just rubs that pain away. Well, that vibration is actually blocking the pain gateway to the brain. And so just through that, you automatically are making that pain dissipate. And all the percussive therapy and what the Theragun was created on was the combination of pressure and vibration. And so it's a natural way to help people be and live more pain-free. So it's to help people move and live better naturally. And my goal here is, you know, we're kind of a subset of Therabody with Therabody University is to take that mission statement with all the products we have, but expand from the products and empower individuals, which is a key word for what we stand for, um, to inspire and empower so that they can understand what and bring awareness to their body and they know which tool is right for them at the time. And by tool, I mean, that tool could be going for a nature walk. You just have that in your back pocket and you need to get outside and be in nature. And that is a tool for you to come back and now be more productive at work or be more present with your family because you were stressed. I want to empower people to know that that's what they need at that moment. Or is that sitting with a Theragun? Or is that sitting using compression on your legs? Or is that using some CBD? What, whatever it may be, we want to make sure that you're empowered to actually make that choice for yourself and you're educated on what that's going to do to your body. Like you said, if it's meditating or journaling, it's still something that's to get you feeling better and move better naturally. Mm -hmm. So let's trace it back um, to kind of the origin stories of what got you into your role here um, at their body. So when did your, yeah, we could trace it back to when you want to start. But when did your interest in well-being first begin? And as you mentioned, it started with physical well-being for you. Oh, man, this one might be a longer answer then. Yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, so I started as a personal trainer at Gold's in San Antonio, Texas. And it came off of 15 years of being a swimmer. And I enjoyed swimming. And I always thought I was going to be a swim coach. You know, it just felt like a natural progression. And I was teaching mm -hmm. lessons along the way. And then I found CrossFit and I found like there was a good new challenge, but it was also an avenue that I could maybe explore that's taking out of shape people and helpfully helping them get in shape, whatever that means. You know, like at the time I thought it meant one thing and that's obviously expanded since then. Um, but I found the CrossFit and I kind of steered into that direction and decided like a CrossFit coach is better because for me, it was more fulfilling than taking a swimmer who was already good at swimming and making them a little bit better. It was taking someone who's maybe sitting and getting them moving for the first time. So that was like a, a big passion and finding that I needed to be more educated to reach more of the population. And so I think that that spark thankfully came from my first boss at Gold's and he really inspired me to invest in myself and, and really invest in my education, which is something I was never really taught to do. I, was naturally like good at school, but I just ended up being a slacker who, you know, I was always the kid that had the right answer, but never showed his work. Didn't want to do the extra work. <laughs> um, but I never really found the value of in investing because I didn't know what I necessarily wanted to do. So I didn't know what the investing in my education really meant. And thankfully, because of that guidance, I started exploring certification courses. And it was through exploring certification courses that got introduced to all these different lanes and avenues to approach fitness. And then I started realizing some courses stood out to being even more than fitness, which I think you already know what I'm, which I'm alluding to, which is on it. You know, I met John and Shane with on it, went through that course and I could really feel that there was something deeper that they were, they're speaking to besides just being physically fit. And I think, you know, you went through the found, one of the very first courses that was like the original foundations, I think before it was called foundations, right. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and like the goal being that they they don't mention it but it's like subtly about mind and spirit awareness starting there and building a strong foundation and working its way out so i think after peeling back the layers and learning more about how they built the system um becoming friends with those guys and very fortunate to have that friendship there that uh, i saw that that being the underlying factor that differentiates them and why it's so powerful to go through any of their systems and any of their courses that that kind of sparked that awareness of just like okay it's more than just the physical side it's what they're speaking to about building awareness in the body and body mapping is the same thing you can do with your mind and the same thing you can do with your spirit and we should be doing so i think that's mm -hmm. where i initially kind of got fed that in a non-obvious way but it was the curiosity of diving deeper with them to say, hey, what's going on with this course? Why is it so special, right? So I had to dive in with that. And my goal was to actually integrate with them at Gold's Gym when I was there. And um, unfortunately we had a kind of poor leadership at the time that didn't have the similar direction. And my job went away from being physical fitness and helping people in the field to like reporting and computer work all the damn time. Mm -hmm. So. It became very miserable. And since I couldn't get on it to or our, our own company was not seeing that vision of, uh, of what I saw with on it, I was fortunate enough to then pick John and, and, and Shane's ear from on it and say, can I actually join your team instead? And that's how I got to on it the first time. And that's, I think, you know, being part of it and being in the ecosystem is where it really sparked that wellness of like, what does that look like mind, body, spirit wise? Um, because there's a lot that led into like the therabody stuff, but if you want to go into, but I think that's where like the, the wellness piece really exploded for me. And it's kind of stood out of, it's more than just physically fit. You can have the most physical fit person in the world, but they could be very unwell up here. They could be very mm. well unwell in here in the heart. So, yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about your delving into the mind. So you're always very physical focused, body focused with your 15 years as a swimmer, then CrossFit and then all your, um, all your fitness training. And then you awoke an awareness to the importance of the mind. Um, so what did that journey look like and continues to look like today? How do you attend to your mental well-being? Um, you know, I think, um, thankfully, it's growing in popularity. I think meditation was one of the first things, but it was a book, um, The Untethered Soul, Michael mm -hmm. Singer. That mm -hmm. was like John's first gift. I think it was like when I first started, he was like, have you read this book? And I read it and it was just bringing awareness to that little voice in your head and what it's saying and bringing awareness to the conversations that we have with ourselves and how powerful those are. And I think it's those subtle conversations that you might not realize that are happening, you know, what is it like 20,000 thoughts a day that you're having? And so if even half of those are negative, that's still way too many. And so if you're beating yourself up over that, that can end up being what shows up and manifests into your life, right? It's mm -hmm. you, are, you have that power within you. And so whatever you are thinking is normally going to become your reality. Um, that, that I think that whole journey kind of sparks the rabbit hole of finding out other people who are looking at this, this uh, awareness of the mind and another one that just instantly comes to mind is Dr. Joe Dispenza and his quote of your personality becomes your personal reality. So whatever you are projecting is your personal reality. So mm -hmm. if you're not fixing and working on your personality, then you're, and you're having a miserable personality, you're going to have a miserable person, personal reality. Those things are so interconnected. And while, like I said, you can move well and be physically fit, but if those conversations are poor, then you're going to have poor relationships, which are going to expand into poor career path or um, loneliness, whatever it may be. So I think looking at those conversations that you're having with yourself, bringing that mental awareness to the voices that are inside your head and saying like, it's okay to let things go and not hold on to them. And that was a big step for me of, of letting go of things in the past that may have held me back and like emotions that, you know, I've, held onto for too long. So that way I can be more present in the moment and be more committed to those who are right in front of me. Mm -hmm. This is how many of us I think are even having conversations. Like I think I've, I've always enjoyed conversations with you because you're here in the moment right now. There's nothing else you're thinking about and people can feel that mm -hmm. you can see the commitment behind your eyes versus people whose eyes are just like thinking about everything else in their world. 
as opposed to being present. So if you can clean that up, you can see how it just responds in relationships. You can see how it reflects into, like I said, what your career path is, what your home life looks like. All of that becomes better. And why would you not want to be better? So I think it was just like, it's a, it comes down to the simple stuff. Like, why would I not want to be better in that area? But it had to start with the awareness, right? That I was not as far along, I think, mentally as I wanted to be once the awareness was brought. So once the awareness was there, I was like, ooh, something to approach and fix that. Mm-hmm. Spirit, something to approach and fix that. Um, and I think it was just books and just various conversations because of the atmosphere and the culture surrounding on it, meeting people like you. Um, and you know the other people who have come into these courses, they're all very similar and having these conversations that make you want to be better so that you can connect more, so that you can be an example, so you can show the light that you have inside of you. Mm -hmm. That community was a huge piece of that um, transition Mm -hmm. from you being solely body focused to body, mind, and spirit, I'm sure. Um, So let's talk about the integration of the spirit, the heart. How did that come about? Um, Same, similar to the mental, but let's get into the spirituality. How did you begin to explore your spiritual, your spirituality, your heart, your connection with all? I mean, I, can I just make it in the most simple form? Shane yeah. Hines. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's such a big influence for that because he has such a big heart. Um, and, and so does John, don't get me wrong, but just like, you know, Shane has this, this glowing energy that's about community and connection. And I think that the, like, like we've already said, mind, body, spirit, they're so interconnected that if your mind is having those negative emotions, you can't connect. But I define spiritualism as something slightly different than most where it's not thinking like religious and connection to something even bigger. I think it's just the need for the tribe, right, of like-minded individuals. So I think it was a perfect storm of, I enjoyed life in San Antonio and I didn't mind working a ton because it was just like, I was young and full of energy. And I'm not saying I'm not now. I'm, it's not like I'm like that old, but it's just like full of energy where just like, I don't see burnout. That's not a thing. I didn't know about the work-life balance. I didn't really care because it was just like, I love what I was doing and I still love what I'm doing, but I think you still need to take time away from that. And I think going to Dallas the first time and not necessarily enjoying my work was not great. The home life was not my favorite. So coming down to Austin and finding people of like-mindedness here, both at my workplace with people like that I'm meeting inside the Onnit community, but also just like-minded people in the town that I'm in really fed the spirit. Cause I feel like the spirit is fed through connection, whether that's connection to another human being or connection to something bigger than yourself. And you can call that God, love, truth. I try and use those interchangeably of just like whatever that bigger connection is. And I think that it's through that connection of other people that we find that connection to something bigger. I think that, you know, if you put someone in a room and close them off from human contact, that's going to be more deadly than closing them off from food or water, even, even though that might kill them faster, what's going to kill their spirit faster. It's that lack of commit, uh, human connection. So I think it was that exploration of how powerful the community was and that emphasis on a system of education that, like I said, when you go through the course, it's like mind and body, but the spirit part is like the on it community go pass it off to your neighbors and maybe they'll pass it off to the people inside their county or the city and then the county and then the state and then eventually the, the country and then the world if we can pass that off that is feeding the spirit right there to me mm-hmm. and I think that that was that exploration for it yeah so when you left on it um you left that very rich community and you left to go back to gold um how did you keep that community alive when you went back to gold? And then, then you left the Theragun where you're working from home um, and kind of stuck in this pandemic times. How do you keep your connections alive and thriving um, during this time as well? So leaving, it wasn't so easy. leaving for golds was like one or leaving for golds that second time from on it was definitely one of the hardest times because I love John and Chain so much. Those two conversations like just tugged at my heart and I couldn't like I was just waiting for John one day and I just couldn't wait long enough I had to go home to let out my dog or something like that but when he called me finally he told me at the end of the call he's like man you sounded so heavy when I first called you I was like well this it means so much to me and I hate leaving with unfinished business and I will fully say that like I knew there was going to be a commitment to golds 
leaving a little bit of that community behind to focus on the project, which was, you know, blank piece of paper, go create a studio, whoever you see fit, and I get to build the team. And I thought that was the powerful piece. That was what I was holding on to is the fact that I'll get to build this team and I'll get to build it the, the way that I see it. And that way I can fill a community around me of a good team like they've done it on it. So I yeah. knew it was like kind of a short-term sacrifice to go back to a city that wasn't necessarily my favorite, but maybe this time it was on my terms instead of trying to forcefully go up there and then working on building a team that I was cared about and was passionate about. And the studio is something, the, the studio concept that I put together um, was something I still love. And it's like, a, it's in there and I hope that it lives on. There's still like the glimmers of hope from different partnerships that reach out to me at times. And I'm like, ooh, it, it could come back. But it was two weeks, probably, we were probably like maybe a week or two away from signing the lease for our first location when the pandemic hit last year. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's when it got put on indefinite hold and I got switched to digital fitness, which was fine. So I enjoyed that. I got to work with coaches again to film fitness videos for Gold's Gym. Great. And then we, as a company, Gold's filed for chapter 11 and we got bought by new owners and they threw out that project, got rid of a lot of our leadership team and made me the head of fitness for Gold's, which was kind of a cool goal, but it necessarily wasn't the best thing for me. Um, I think it was like a validation of just like, it's something I may have always wanted a little bit in the back of my mind, but now that I had it, I knew that it wasn't the right fit knowing that my my passion had moved to mind, body, spirit mm -hmm. and the direction of the new company, while I agree with it was not the most in line with me, which is going back to the bodybuilding days of golds. I think that's great. I think I truly believe and they know this. They're going to be successful with this. It's just going to take time, but it was through building this studio and saying the same thing that we're kind of already talking about of through education, I learned so much from others. So when I was putting together the education for the studio, I wanted to bring in the people who taught me. I didn't want to be the one who just taught it myself. And so on, it was going to be a strategic partner. So John and Shane were going to come in. We're going to have the people who, who invented the massage chair and like the infrared sauna. So we wanted to have some scientists come in, a sleep scientist, a foam rolling guy. Well, Theragun was going to be one of our partners. And the person who's passionate about education is Dr. Jason, the founder of Theragun. So probably two weeks before the pandemic hit, Dr. Jason flew to Dallas and we recorded education together and we spent that whole day just connecting. And I think he, he told me later, he's like, I knew I wanted you from that day, but you seemed like you were in a good place. So I'd say all that to say, I think uh, like you know, manifestation or just like people's spirit speaking to each other. Dr. Jason has one of the biggest hearts and I think he can feel it. The week after I got named like the head of fitness for Golds and like was happy, but not really. He called me and said, I want you on my team. It was just like out of the blue. And he was just like, I want you on the Theragun team. And I was like, okay, I just got this new role. Like, you know, let me go slow. And so a month, you know, three or four weeks later is when I said, okay, what does this look like? And we started exploring that. And that's when I was just like, man, this is so much more in line with where I'm passionate about and what I wanted to focus on. And so it became the new company the new ownership group for Golds loved the idea of the boutique studio I put together, but they didn't know if they would ever do it. So I'm mm -hmm. not going to sit there and wait when my goal was to build a team. And now all that's just sitting there in, in the open. And I'm like, I can't get to build a team. It's just going to be fitness for Golds and that's it. So it kind of backtracked. So while it was a dream job, it wasn't necessarily the dream for right then, right? Like the right mm -hmm. time for it. So mm -hmm. I think that the, the Therabody team, even though we're all remote, it's that tribe following Dr. Jason's passion and lead, just like it is for on it. So it was mm -hmm. just like another big heart individual who cares so much about his team that getting to know the team before I even joined, I was like, I want to be a part of that. That feeds me. So even though it's zoom conference calls, whatever it may be, it's still that tribe that's supporting each other. That's all working towards a common goal. And it's less ego and more we go, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I love about it. And that's what's brought me to this and like kind of fulfilling that mind, body, spirit piece. And we're expanding right now from just like the Theragun product into getting into the wellness space. So it's really exciting times for us. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel you uh, manifested this all into your reality, um, just in by your being, you're being you and listening to 
your heart connecting your mind, your body, your spirit, a continual evolution led you to that conversation um, and that connection with Dr. Dr. John or Jason, sorry. Dr. Jason, yeah. Dr. J. Dr. Dr. J. Yeah. And so that's really beautiful. Um, so I'm trying to pinpoint um, your threshold. You are crossing um, from a place of should, should, shoulds to your must. And it seems like that's all been pretty easy for you. Um, but I'm sure it has not been. Um, the, the most recent one that I heard in this conversation is, yeah, you got your uh, seemingly dream job, which would have been a dream job for you maybe four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, um, yeah. uh, having a high, a high role within the company, a lot of responsibility, like steady paycheck, a, a f- uh, good future, but you turn that down to pursue this Therabody um, position or you left it. And I don't know, did that, was that hard for you to do? Um, I, I think, here, I'll even backtrack because I, I kind of glazed over it. The first one was actually leaving Golds the first time for on it. Yeah. While the job was miserable, it was still, there was still a lot of opportunity in Golds and I was being offered to like go travel and live internationally mm-hmm. and like be working for our international franchises and like choose where in Europe I want to live. And like, that was, I think, part of the back of my mind that thinking like, I always want that. So why would I not do that? Yeah. And talking to John and Shane and it being organic that, you know, they said that it would be a great fit for me to be on the team. And now I'll be in Austin weekends are going to be taken because we teach so many courses and just being transparent. It was, it was going to be a pay cut coming from gold to on it. And so, and I hadn't lived in Austin. So it was like, I knew I loved Austin as a city I visited, but it was obviously a new city, less pay, no European travel <laughs> and everybody in a friend's group that I had up in Dallas said that it was crazy. Like when you go yeah. to the shoulds, I should never take a lateral position because the title didn't change. I yeah. should never take a pay cut. I should never go to a lesser known startup. I should never blah, blah, blah. But even though I wasn't the most aware and I, you know, we're always just on a journey, right? It's just a continuum. We're never at an end result. I still wasn't as far along thin as I am now. Something just told me whether that was screaming in my ear when I was silent or just pulling at my heartstrings to go and commit to this path that it would open up the right doors down the road. So pulling away and saying, I need something different than golds, fall on it. Don't go live in the European dream that you think is fancy. It's not going to be as cool as you think. Go commit to something that's actually better where you're in a community. You don't need to travel. You need a, you need a tribe. And so I think that was the first one where it was like, leave the comforts of a company where, you know, gold is like my first big guy job. You know, I was a mm-hmm. personal trainer and I just started part-time and I was coaching at a CrossFit gym before that. So that was, you know, it was never really like a full-time salary position to your point. So leaving that the first time and then leaving my community for that potential to build something. And I think that's where I've gotten my, self in trouble other times is to like commit myself to a potential instead of commit myself to the reality but you know having that freedom and knowing that there was autonomy to me to build the team everything was going according to plan so I have no complaints about leaving to golds Mm -hmm. and then coming going from golds after that project that project is why I went back yeah even though it was a dream job for being the head of fitness like you said that was me for two years ago so it was it was easy and difficult. It was like, I love this, but do I, do I owe golds anything is the question I kept coming up. And it was like, this is an opportunity to show up and flex and say, look, if I'm finally head of fitness, this is what I would do, blah, blah, blah. And is that just me doing that to stroke my ego, to, mm-hmm. to have that opportunity to finally be in a role where I can show that like, I'm capable of doing this. Or should I go do the thing that's actually fulfilling me more? So I think that was that internal battle that was taking place when that happened. Yeah. And it was through the, the organic loving conversations that I get from Dr. Che that just like, okay, I, I can tell just like with on it, it was just like the heart is pulling me more. And thankfully I listened to the heart instead of just saying like, I'm going to go do this and be the head of fitness for goals because that's like a great title and doing all the things that, I think more are for validation than they were to actually help people. So mm-hmm. 
and like I said, it was difficult from that perspective because we always had this ego screaming, but we're, I'm training it to, you know, shut up more and just listen to the heart and the, and the, the spirit that's in us that I think yeah. is always guiding all of us, but it's just a matter of if, if we listen, right? Yeah. And I feel that it takes a lot of faith. Um, how do you cultivate that faith in your life? How do you, um, yeah, how do you just go for that? How do you step in to the must um, over and over again? and overcome fear what is uh um paul check i think he's mm -hmm. the one who said uh false expectations appearing real is fear yeah and so i've listened to him you know a few years ago so every time i feel like there's fear i think it's just a matter of which one is going to feed me and which one am i putting expectations on that are putting making it seem like i can't reach it when I, there was nobody telling me I couldn't and everybody believed in me at Gold's, but it was even more trust. It felt like instantly and a tribe going back to that tribe yeah. with their God, with their gun, their body. I think yeah. it was just like that pull. I think that's what it is. It's just like, that's why I went on it. It's because I knew it was a tribe, not just a job. And I want to find, and I always want to be in a place where it doesn't feel like work, right? Like I want mm -hmm. it to be that. And so I don't want it to be like grinding for two more years. I don't have a problem with working hard, but it should be stuff that I truly enjoy. And even if you find stuff you truly enjoy, you still need breaks from it. Just want to throw that out there, but um, going down and, and I think having faith in the fact that you have a stronger team to support you and it's not just on you. Yeah. That there wasn't a strong team of goals, but I just felt like, it was a strong team more in line with my future than my past. Yeah. That's where the can, faith comes from. So, Yes. Can you think of a time where you were stuck by fear, paralyzed by fear? Because fear is thought to be the number one thing that holds people back. So can you think about a time where you were stuck or paralyzed by fear and how did you overcome that situation? Maybe it was a move, maybe it was a job switch. I don't know. I mean, the, the biggest one, like I said already, was calling John and Shane about me leaving on it. Yeah. <laughs> because, and I, like I said, it was, it was a unique opportunity where I knew it was right, but it was just that fear of letting them down because I love them so much. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I had been exposed to enough challenging times like that with really strong people who always just want to see you do better mm -hmm. I don't think I've been exposed to that enough in my life to see what the end result will what it was going to end up being yeah. I was putting that like what the expectations were going to go of the conversation but then when I get it out and I talk to John or I talk to Shane and they're both just like oh a hundred percent this is for you you need to go do it yeah. But leading up to that, it was just like, I'm letting them down. Oh my God. Like, I, I don't know if I can even call this. Like, I feel just terrible. Like, this is just, I love these guys. And I feel like I'm just, you know, the expectations they had for us and as a group, blah, blah, blah. Like, all these narratives and stories. I, I didn't stop. I knew I had to do it. I, I didn't, you know, steer clear of it. But, it's just, I remember that as such a palpable time because like I cared so much and, about them. And I also cared about what they thought about me, but just like a good leader and a good friend should do, they supported, not disappointed. It's like that. It was kind of like a, well, don't say that. Don't be so cool about it. I actually want you to be mad. <laughs> I want yeah. you to be angry. Don't be so supportive. I know that like, that's what you're going to do, but man, I just like, it's just so much better to have those type of people in your life. And like I said, I hadn't, hadn't come from that with my own family and it's no knock against my own family. Like family's great too, but just like, I never had a good male influence. Another had good guidance and mentors along the way. That first boss was a good one. And when I was leaving there, he was just like, dude, get the heck out of here. This, this company is going down. And then it was like, when I went to on it, there's when they cleared that bad leadership out and he left. So going back was just a different challenge in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was just John and Shane's big heart now leading and teaching me new, new ways. Right. Like it was just the bigger heart side that was just like, Oh man, I, I feel bad. I hope I'm not hurting their hearts, you know? 
Yes. That's where I feel, and, that's where it paralyzed me. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure like that experience having to tell John and Shane that you are leaving uh, made it easier for you to tell Golds that you are leaving to go to Theragun. Um, yes. No. Uh, I mean, in a way it was, it was very unique. Like I said, the, uh, the whole chapter 11 thing kind of changed everything where it was like, they got rid of so many people in the leadership team. They got rid of the guy who brought me back. Our yeah. CEO, they had gotten rid of him as well. And he's a great friend. And he's obviously put a lot of trust in me to go bring me back and say, here's a blank piece of paper, go create a studio. Yeah. And so it was, I think it was just easier because he was already gone and that wasn't my choice. I hated to see it happen. So now we had a new boss who I had never established a relationship with because they came from the German team. Yeah. So that, that made it very easy of just like, cool, thanks for the role. But now that I've had one conversation on both sides, this one's better. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, but even there, I was very transparent and I said, I have another offer. And I don't know a lot of people don't do that, but I went into gold and said, I have another offer, but I'm saying this because I do care about this company and I want to know what you see in my future. And they said, based on what you've, I've gotten to know you in the last two months, it sounds like this is a better fit for you. And I think like a good boss should recognize that and empower you to do so. So props to the, the one who did come in to replace, you know, a friend of mine and I only knew for two months, he still was able to say, this sounds like a better fit and I love you and I want you here, but I think you'll be happier over there. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the various mentors and helpers you've met along the way. You've referenced a bunch already now. Your first boss, starting with your first boss at Gold's, um, there's Shane, there's John, there's Dr. J. So let's just take a moment to acknowledge um, the various mentors and helpers you've met along the way. Of course, there's been many. So let's just pick a few. And what were your main takeaways that you've learned from them that you are incorporating into your being now and into your new role as director of education at Therabody? Um, I think my first boss at Gold's Aaron it just taught me to be a lifelong learner and commit to myself on that front. Um, you know, he's, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. That was one of the biggest strengths. And like, he helped me fall in love with learning again. That was huge. And I think John and Shane just taught me to like lead with the heart and trust that more. And I think I don't want to throw out anything or discount anybody else that every single person I think I met and had a good conversation with, and even like, even just met if I just shook their hand, I think it was an opportunity to be mentored by when I was able to serve them through on its education. So like, like yourself in there, every mm -hmm. single conversation we've had, that's a way to help guide me to be better. And mm -hmm. I see that and I honor that. And that's one of the only things I do miss right now. And in, in the pandemic mode is the hands-on education and something as palpable as on it's where it's people paying to come there because they want to be a part of that community. And I think that's what makes it so unique. And you've obviously experienced that to come down there and to people are committing energy through their money and their time to come be a part of that. As opposed to when I was teaching education for golds, it was, we're paying the trainers to attend to our course. So, mm -hmm. not, so half of them don't even want to be there. <laughs> So yeah. it was always unique. So coming to on it and learning that and seeing that. And then because of that, seeing that time and energy committed to, um, to my side is like, how much time and energy am I putting to myself? Cause all these guys are self-investing to become better, to become more knowledgeable, to become a better trainer, husband, wife, like employee, whatever it is that helped teach me. And I think that putting that into a group, is just like, those are mentors right there. I think that was like some of the most powerful that like that was a pivotal point to get out of gold's atmosphere, try something new and then get mentored by so many people that I don't feel like, and I had this conversation openly with John and Shane. I'm just like, I don't feel like I, I grew or I, I did as much as I wanted to. And I have a regret on that side, but I grew way more than I expected to. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I wasn't as, production it was like a time in my life where it was kind of like a it's like its own sabbatical in its way you know it's like like let's say we weren't doing work there but it was just like a time to reflect and grow and I think mm -hmm. that was just like a, a big mentorship in itself because of what the on it tribe I got attracted to yeah so I think so, that, that was unique 
that's a huge win. Um, and throughout your journey and through your, your, your adventures, um, you've had many wins. So let's take a moment to acknowledge some of your wins. What are you most proud of accomplishing um, thus far on your path? Most proud of? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's never probably going to see the light of day, but I'm, I'm so proud of what the studio is at, even though nobody really got to see it. Uh-huh. I hope that someday it gets just to come out there. But even like, I'll dive back into the education I put together sometimes. And I'm like, I wrote this. This is it's fascinating. I feel like someone else was writing this at the time or like, I don't even recognize it sometimes. I'm like, this is deeper or very well thought out. And I just, because mm-hmm. like, I just had a chance to come from that time period with the mentorship and then just dive deep into how do I create a studio model that it can now expand so we can get more people in front of passionate individuals like what's in on it and like partner with them to get more coaches and everything like that like like i said it, even though it's it was just on the verge and it was like 90 percent of the way there and we're about to sign the lease it's a very unique product and i think it was ahead of its time if we got that chance to launch of course like you got to go execute um but i was confident that we were going to execute and i had the right people and team there to do it and organize that and be open to the collaboration that was coming from it. Yeah. Are you able to discuss like the foundations of that concept for that studio? Like what were the yeah. core foundations that made it such a, a wonderful thing? Um, well, even I'll even start with like the core values that I put together. I'm still like, are, are ones that are almost like, you said at the beginning of this, we have a mission statement and a company has a mission statement. And it was like, the values were like my own and I still would drive through it. And we kind of put it together into ethic, E-T-H-I-C. And so it was like uh, empathy, transparency, humility, integrity. And instead of community, I put connection. So Mm -hmm. I actually had community originally, but I changed it to connection. So each of those were our driving values, our core values. And like I said, I've kind of still kept that as my own because it was like diving into what is this company going to stand for? And since it was just me and I didn't have anybody else on the team, it was just me in a silo at the time. What are all these influences that I just learned from being on it for almost a year and from my various mentors? So that was like the core foundation when it comes to values and the, and the principles kind of like on it has their five pillar principles. We had a few principles and it was just like, context is king. You're not better than anybody else. You're working for better than yourself each day. Um, pain doesn't equal gain because uh, like I said gain equals gain. It's kind of taking the old saying of pain equals gain from the gym world and kind of flipping on its head. The concept was high intensity interval training is being blown up, right? It's, it's everywhere. And we're already stressed in our world. And that's just another stress. Yeah. Just look at it in the most simple form. And so your body, you and me could go be in the same amount of shape, or let's say we're the same age, same gender, live in the same state, eat the same. We go do the same workout. We shoot for, you know, an orange zone or something like that. Yeah. We have the same heart rate. We sleep and then we wake up the next day. One of us is sore. One of us isn't because our bodies respond differently. Mm -hmm. Right. So why are we incentivized to do the same workout the next day to go in there and burn the same amount of calories or get in the same zone? That doesn't make sense to me. Everybody's unique. So how do we take subjective and objective data and then help you build awareness in your body? Like I, I know when I wake up, like how intense I should probably go that day. Most of the time, because I've swam for 15 years and I've worked out ever since then every day. Like yeah. I think the longest period of time I've gone without working out is like, seven days when I'm home in Washington, but I still hike, like I'm working and doing something. And I think that for those who haven't, it's nothing against it. It's just like, you got to start somewhere with awareness. And so with the technology we have these days, the idea was, you know, there's whoop, there's aura, they test HRV, which is an indicator of your body. We were going to pull sleep data, your activity data, um, your workout data from the previous day and your HRV from any wearable and spit out every morning a new recovery score for you. And based on that recovery score, we suggest which level of class you go into 
and you get unique heart rate zones that only vary by about like, you know, five to seven points, but you get new heart rate zones each day based on how recovered you are. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say you wake up at 63%, you shouldn't go do a high intensity class. So what you do is come in and do something like a yoga style class where it's stretching yeah. and conditioning, because we know that that's actually when you get stronger. Because the whole hypothesis that I was putting together was high intensity interval training is great, but when it's overdone, nobody's getting stronger because you're staying in a constant state of stress. And you don't go to the gym to get stronger. You go to the gym to get weaker. And it's through recovery that you become stronger. So if you're never recovering, you're never getting stronger. Mm -hmm. And so the idea was go do your low in, low impact training is what we called it lit for short. And you do some yoga and you'd see your recovery score go up because we know that helped you get stronger. Yeah. Or you woke up in mid or moderate and you go do a conditioning style class instead of high intensity. If you wake up at 90% and you're, you go do a hit class, your score goes down because we say it does take a toll on your body, but recognize that that's okay as well. And come back and do a low intact the next day because your body's going to be sore and beat up. But we also had individual infrared saunas, massage room or massage chairs, compression sleeves, and Theragun, which is why, you know, I met Theragun and Therabody is because they were going to be part of our recovery partners in this ecosystem. Yeah. But all of those things fed into the ecosystem where if you sat in the infrared sauna, that would boost your recovery score because we know that helped you. So it was like incentivizing the opposite behavior of every other studio on the market. That was a, that was kind of the goal was like saying, build awareness. And if you're beat up, we're saying still work out, but it doesn't have to be the high intensity workout. Mm -hmm. I think all these, a lot of these other wearables have the data to say that you're beat up and you're sore, but then you go still do the same workout you're planning to do anyway. It's not going to stop mm -hmm. you. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you take that next step of action? And for me, it was also if you feel beat up, you don't have to come to class either. If you want to go for a walk, if you want to stay home and stretch, if you want to go play a game with someone, just do something to get the blood flowing that doesn't have to be a class. And we would tell people that in the app, if you don't want to take class, go outside and just go for a walk. So like, what kind of studio do you, have you ever heard of that's telling you don't come to the studio today, go rest. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants you in the studio to get you there and get your money. It's like, I trust that I'm here to help you be healthy. That was the concept behind it and build the awareness so that one day, maybe you don't even need the wearable. You know which class you are going to do based on when you wake up. Just like I know how intense I can be on most days. Some days I'm a little bit wrong, but I push myself. I'm like, oh, I, I had it in me today. But I think it, it starts there with that awareness. And I was trying to help people build that awareness and then feed them this program around it. That was the concept. Yeah, I love I love that idea. Um, but the external world shut it down like things beyond your control yeah put an end to that and like that happens yeah. with people that have great ideas and for whatever reason often beyond their control there's barriers there's blockages how did you deal with that um putting so much time and effort and taking such a chance on this new project and then it's a cut your house of cards kind of come crashing down on you um, you know, obviously it was like, because of the pandemic that had been kind of put on an indefinite hold and I got switched to something else. And it was like, still had that small belief in the back of my head that it, maybe it would come back. So I think yeah. I held on to that for a couple months, but then it started becoming a little bit more realistic of just like, it might not. And I think it was just because I had that time of reflection and focusing on a different project that we had to respond to with folks on digital fitness Yeah, that that I was at peace with, I, uh, that's why I say like, what am I most proud of? Cause it's just like, I'm so proud of the work that I, even though it's unfinished in a way, I think I put everything I could into it in the time. And I'm so proud of the fact of where it got to, you know, that's where I Absolutely. think it sits. And so I think that's why I'm at peace. Like if it was just like, even two or three months before that, when I didn't have the idea fully baked or we like, we didn't have the, I didn't have the education fully done. I think I would just want to mentally finish the education, but knowing that like I can open up this document and be like, here's the five day in-person training. Here's the following 12 weeks of integrated programming that also educates followed by what I learned from Dr. John Brady from precision nutrition, a year of daily intentional practice for the coaches and what mm -hmm. type of education system does that? Mm -hmm. Not many. So yeah. it was like, 
I was so proud of everything that went into it that I was just like, you know what? If it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be, but I know I put my heart into it and I don't have any regrets for that. Like I missed something on it. It was just like, it's like a fully big project that's just out in the world, <laughs> but I know that the intentions were good and the pure. And if the world said no, then what's the next opportunity in the door? And that's where, you know, Dr. Jason calling, it felt weird the exact, at that exact time. But then like a couple weeks later, like I told you, it was just like easy and hard. Once it was just like, this is what you see for me. I am in, I feel like this is the next stage. And now I have the pieces based on exploring that for nine months on my own to come in here and say, how can we grow? Yeah, absolutely. And you did your best and there's nothing more that you could ask of yourself than that. And just taking a look at what life presents with you and rolling with it. Um, it was all happening for you and it, yeah, it's going great now. Um, what are some other challenges um, and temptations that have hindered you on your path to success? What are some challenges and how did you overcome them? Some other challenges on my path here? I mean, I'm very grateful to have not many large challenges that have ever really presented themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that hard challenge actually is the hardest thing for me, and this is where it's, you know, it's unique to every person, right? It's just actually learning to care more because I think I was just socially distant, not socially distant, but um, emotionally more distant because of just growing up in a split household and learning to like fend for myself that it became a lot more of just focusing on what I can do. And I think that's where I've challenged myself and that's, you know, challenged myself to overcome that. And I think that's been that challenge of just to say, how can I do this with a team and not just me? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So just like, that's, I think that's just been my internal challenge. It's never really been too prominent, but I've definitely noticed that at different times in my life where it's just like, I try and put it all on my shoulders as opposed to empowering and passing it off to others. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's a gift that I might have to, to teach or to put together a team and that's expanded and grown into something. So trusting that and saying, now it's a team and it's, I don't need to prove anything by, on my own. Mm -hmm. I think that's maybe, that may be why it was a perfect time. And I think that's what maybe what I needed for that project, right? Like, and this is even just like, what's hitting me right now or having this conversation of, maybe that's why it was that so at peace is because like, I did all that on my own and maybe that was proving it to myself because it was just me for those, you know, nine months. Yeah. And once that was closed, it was like, I did that on myself because of everybody else. So I think it was that recognition of just like, I was putting together a team to support that. That's what I was most proud of. And it was that openness to say, I don't know it all. We're going to bring in Dr. Jason. That's how I met him. That, we're going to bring it on it. We're going to bring in all these experts. Yeah. As opposed to before where it was just like, no, look at what I did. Look at all the things that I know. And I think it was more of like a chest inflate than it was anything else. So yeah. I think it was just from that moment on, maybe that, that sparked some healing in me and, and allowed me to move it forward. But I think that was the biggest challenge before that was opening it up and just saying like, I don't need to have all the answers and ask for help more and put that ego aside and say it like be more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I think I had a harder time with that much earlier on. Um, I always say I was a hot-headed trainer, the egotistic trainer, just like everybody is when they first get into personal training. <laughs> yeah. We're all the hot-headed trainers. So I think it was took those years of just like learning more vulnerability and humility and just saying it's okay to be to not know it all and put those things together. I think that was just always been it, it's still it'll still come up, but I don't think it's as big anymore to say yeah. like, I need help. I need help now. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to hear about your evolution um, of continuous learning and growth through it all. What has been your greatest life lesson, your biggest aha moment that you've encountered on the path that you'd like to share with us today? So through all the highs and lows that is life, what has been your greatest takeaway that you've learned thus far that you'd like to share with us? There was one big aha moment like last year at some point in the middle of the reflection of like pandemic, you know, just being shut down. 
Mm -hmm. really learning to like love myself even more and I, I I and I hate the the pain the world went through with the pandemic but I saw it as either an opportunity to it's either going to be people come out worse or they're going to come out better it's not going to be the same the world's yeah. going to change and people are going to come out better or worse so what can I do to make it better and it was through like the times and reflections there where I was it was it changed that narrative I think just based on these the, the last question you had and what I was sharing there from learn all that I can. And then I think like, you know, an ellipsis happened of like dot, 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 share it with everybody I can. So it was, it was that first step, I think is where I had stopped before mm -hmm. learn everything I can, but I think, and I think we need to go through phases and I think that's the stages of life, right? It's like, you have to absorb. Yeah. But once you get to a point and then it, then it becomes stop, don't hold it in. How do you empower others? So learn all I can tell everybody <laughs> and I empower. That's what I want everybody to do is just like, and I think that all encompasses everything, right? It's like, if you learn all about love, then tell everybody about love. If you learn all about humility, tell everybody about humility. If you learn all about spiritual practices, tell everybody about your spiritual practice. So like, it can be all encompassing to everything that you do, but I don't, that goes back to the feeding the spirit of just like, don't stop with just learning it, teach it to others, share it with others, because mm -hmm. that helps elevate humanity. So I think yeah. it was just like that saying that kind of hit me last year and it's in one of my notes that's just like top of my notes of just like, learn all I can, sh tell everybody you know. And, and that's what you're doing uh, with their body as their director of education. That is your role is to do just that. Um, what excites you about the year ahead uh, in this role? What do you look forward to most about this new endeavor that you embarked upon? I think the, there's two parts. It's like the amazing trajectory, trajectory that their body's on. It's just like more than Dr. Jason could ever dream. So with that, there's so much potential. And with that potential, there's so many lives to be changed. So I think it's, I'm so excited for that path and that trajectory to know that, that we're on such like a path to share with so many people. So then now, how do we share it? And I think it's that challenge of, figuring out the habits, right? It, figuring out how to implement change that's lasting. And if anybody had the answer, then the gym business would be a, the biggest money maker in the world, right? Mm -hmm. But instead we have 70% of our population here in, in the United States obese now on the latest census. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of work to be done and I don't think that I'm going to get the answer, <laughs> but I think that we have the right team and the right path of like a company and a founder who truly cares to get the message out more thoroughly than a lot of other companies have been able to do. And that excites the hell out of me of taking advantage of that and then trying to figure out how to really elicit the change and get the, this world to be more well. Yeah. And I feel in order to create change in the world and others, it must always begin with the self. And you are definitely starting that change from within. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, I've tried to lead from that, but I think it's really starts. One that I said, that's why I'm so excited is because it starts Dr. Jason first and foremost. He's the founder who cares about it. And it yeah. starts with himself and the change he puts and we're just all catching up to be reflections of him too from that. So it's funny that you, yeah. that you share that because it starts with self. And that's why I think we have such a unique opportunity and I want to be better to help be that example too and help spread that word, message in the world. Mm -hmm. So as we talk about attending to the self, what are your essential self-care practices that are the foundations to everything that you do and be? Um, Basic rule is break a sweat every day. That's one of the basic rules. I try to make sure it's a workout, but if I can just at least break a sweat, I know I'll feel better that day. So that's 
that's a basic rule every day. I have to do that. Yeah. Um, this year, my two words have been focused on discipline and gratitude because I think that underlies so many different things. I was trying to take like some of my favorite quotes and all these different things that help keep me motivated. What does it come down to? If I can practice gratitude, I know that I'll be happier that day. If I'm upset with something or like looking at something that I don't have or I'm envious of someone else, if I can switch it to gratitude, I'm now happy and not envious anymore. It takes away that feeling. The discipline to get up and move my body and stretch. So like taking care of that self-care and stretching in the mornings to eat properly and be fully aware of what I'm feeding my body, but also be fully aware of what I'm feeding my mind, taking away social media more. I don't watch the news and I haven't for, I don't think I've ever watched the news on my own ever. So <laughs> thankfully, thankfully I've, I've kept that off, but I think keeping off social media too and being fully and more consciously aware of those things is the form of self-care so that you're not having to like why even expose yourself if you're if it's just going to upset you if it's just going to spark an emotion that's not positive so mm -hmm. i think that's the, a big part of the self-care and getting outside in nature more um i got to do that every day i don't care what the temperature is you know like i was just up in colorado two weeks ago it got down to the negatives and so i took the dog out in the morning and it was just like bundle up but I'm going to go outside and enjoy it. I know if I sit inside, it won't be as happy either. So like break a sweat, get outside in nature, practice discipline and gratitude and all things. So that way I'm consciously being more consciously aware of what I'm feeding my mind, body, and spirit. Those are the ways that self-care. Then of course I have tools to support all of those things. And what do those tools look like? Those were where the rules are a little bit more flexible. Just like I'm, I don't have to use compression boots every day. I don't have to use Theragun every day or, or a CBD or anything like that. Like I don't have to every day, but just like, do I need it that day? Is that going to help me? Is that what's going to help my soreness so that I can perform better tomorrow or I can perform better before my run right now or whatever it may be. Um, there's always just all these tools to support having that discipline and having the break a sweat. How do I support that? I don't want to break a sweat while I'm in pain. Right? So how do I make sure that I'm not going to be in pain? It might be one of these tools that we have. Mm -hmm. So despite um, this awareness and um, one thing that you inevitably come up against, because we all do, is resistance. And Stephen Pressfield describes resistance as that negative force in that world that keeps us from fulfilling our dreams and for our greatest potential. Um, it doesn't sound like resistance is much of an issue for you because you just, you just go exercise or you just sweat. But I'm sure it comes up. Um, I don't know how, maybe you can get into how you face resistance, but how do you face resistance and how do you overcome it on a daily basis, Tori? Um, I will say it, I hit the resistance every day. So even though it sounds like I just go exercise, yeah. it sounds like that to people who don't exercise, they're like, oh, it's just so easy for you. It's not. I'm going to say that right now. It's not. What I try and do is remember how I'll feel afterwards. So like get that first one in and hold on to the feeling of what it feels like after, because that's what you're going for. Those first few steps on a run, if you're not feeling it that day, they suck. And you're just like, why am I doing this? Or uh, even just getting outside, like, oh, I don't want to move. I just want to sit here. And you have that conversation, like, why do I want to go outside? But tell me this, it's like, like today it's 72 degrees. Obviously that's unique for not everybody has access to that, but just like, Am I really going to be mad if I go for a walk? Am I going to come back pissed? Probably not. I don't think any time I have ever got back from a walk and said, man, I am so much more angry because of that walk. And so it's remembering how I'll feel afterwards. This sucks right now. And then I'll go for a walk and I'll get back and be like, man, why was I in my head? Why was this happening? What was that conversation? That's going to happen. Our bodies want to find the path of least resistance. You said it best. It's like the resistance will always be there. Our bodies are tailored, psychological, physiologically meant to find the path of least resistance every day. So you have to go earn it every single day. And I'm not saying that that's easy. I'm not saying that there's days where I just lay there in bed and lay there for a lot longer than I should before I do get up. It happens for sure. But it always ends up being focused on Stop focusing on right now and this exact feeling 
what am I going to feel like afterwards? How am I going to perform today if I move versus if I don't move? If I don't move in the morning, I don't perform as well. I'm more groggy. And so do I really want that? Am I going to have regret at the end of the day if I didn't move in the morning and now my work is not nearly as efficient as it could be? Yeah, I'll have more regret. So I need to start thinking about that long term than it is just that moment. Like, I think the, the whole world has been trained to be, give me Amazon right now. Give me likes right now. Yeah. Give me satisfaction right now. And so it's because I'm sitting in this chair, boom, that's my satisfaction right now. And I don't need to move as opposed to I'll feel better afterwards. So focus on that, take advantage of that and know that it will pay off and you'll feel better. Yeah, absolutely. So that's such a power. Like those conversations are just, they're hard, but it happens to everybody. And yeah, just got to keep battling every day. Yeah, that's a powerful reframe. I really appreciate that, Tori. Um, to close every episode, we ask all, I ask all guests um, these final two questions and we've got to that time for your final two questions. All right. So the, Let's hit it. Yeah. So the first one, in three words, how would you describe the experience you were having on this earth? Three words. Three words. I mean, the first one that comes up is just it's it's beautiful. Like I don't I don't see how people can be angry when there's such such a beautiful world out there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's my experience is just like just see the beauty everywhere. Um, it's like so part two of that is like connection. My screen like. I know it's not necessarily a descriptive word, but just like that ability to connect and be connecting to others. Yeah. That's the human experience. And that in itself is beautiful. So I think those are just so interconnected. Um, man, three words, tough, give it down. So we have beautiful connection. And just, um, sounds cheesy, but it's love, right? Like we're here to love, we're here to be love and to reflect love. And I think that, I think that everybody has this. And like I said, it's either you're ignoring the voice or you've had trauma that's causing you to ignore the voice. And you have to figure that out. Like you brought up earlier when we talked before that we started the podcast of just like mm -hmm. the underlying trauma that you don't understand why those actions are being taken place, but you know intrinsically that something isn't right about those actions you know intrinsically you should be doing x y and z and whether like you know I don't, I don't care if you exercise every day i don't care if you're you journal or meditate or walk in nature like what's going to feed your soul so that it's a reflection of love one that works best for you you need to find that journey for you but i think that we all have that instinctiveness or that voice inside of our head that always feeds back to at least that so if whatever you're doing can help feed that and get you to a place of love, mm -hmm. then that's what I think is the most powerful thing in the world, obviously in the universe. And that's been my experience so far. And I want to keep getting better at that, you know, like that's, yeah. I, I need to get, and I need to get, keep getting better at that. Like we're never at an end result. And that's a big focus for me for sure. Cause I've, I think I've closed off that heart for so long that it's, it's taking down the bricks of the wall and, and exposing myself more. Mm -hmm. And appreciating the process that you're on the process, not being fixed on old, like this destination, you're moving forward yeah. in that direction. And what more could you ask of yourself than that? And having grace in that feelings, right? <laughs> and, and the feelings on the path. Yeah. And that's where love comes in. You got to love yourself too. That's first and foremost, right? That's where it starts. And that leads us into our final question. Um, I believe we are all magicians and we have the power to really transform the reality we experience. And I'm going to transport us into the future. I'm going to transport us into the far future where we're alongside an 85 year old Tori Hale. I want you to picture in your head and feel it in your body. What does life look like for Tori Hale at 85? Who are the people you are surrounded by? Where are you? And what is the impact and legacy that you've left on this planet? 
I think I still have a pretty, pretty similar routine. It'll obviously change and evolve, but I want to be able to move forever. So I think the movement practice is key gratitude and just making sure that those are all powerful still every day. I don't want those to go anywhere and I don't see those going anywhere. I think it'll just evolve and I hope that they evolve. Otherwise I'm just being stagnant and sucking at doing it. Yeah. Um, and I see myself just like, in the mountains is where I would like to be. No, it doesn't have to be even secluded. Just like, I love, you know, having neighbors, but I think having a good amount of property and being more surrounded by nature is what calls me. And I'm trying to even manifest that sooner than 85. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't see that changing. I like, you know, I enjoy the beach too. Don't get me wrong. But like, I think just being in a place where I'm always in awe by what nature has to offer. And I think that's one of my places that feels that. And I hope to leave the legacy of leading by example of a life that is filled with love and filled with empowerment of others to fulfill their best self, mind, body, spirit. And that's different for everybody. And I don't have those answers for yet. And I don't think anybody can supply those answers, but I hope to leave the legacy of empowerment so that people can find them. Mm -hmm. So I want you to stay in this future just for a little longer. I want you to just really feel what that feels like to have led by example, to have been the change, to have empowered others, to attend to their mind, their body, their spirit. You are in the mountains or out in nature, definitely in awe by all around you. You're moving, you're healthy, you're physical. and I'm not going to leave this here. I'm going to bring us back to the now, the present day, the infinite now. But that 85-year-old Tori Hale, he sends us a message. He sends you a message. What does he tell you today? It's funny. I go through uh, energy healing sessions, too. And it tends to kind of go back and forth between two things. And I think it, those are the two things that come up that I think will be still something that I need to strive for. Mm -hmm. And that is follow your heart and don't let any barriers stop you from working to get to where it's leading you to go. And I think that's the balance of feminine and masculine energy of the workhorse and the love horse of just like follow it and trust it but you can't just follow there. You also have to take action. So take mm -hmm. the action too, and don't let any barriers stop you from following that. Wow. That's so powerful. What a powerful message from that 85 year old to you today. Um, and <laughs> to, us need to all, listen to it. <laughs> I think we all have to, um, and yeah. it's in, embracing that process, that progress in that direction. So thank you so much, Tori, for this beautiful conversation. Um, for listeners wanting to connect with you more, where can they find you? Where um, do you want to send them? Well, I'm not the most active on social media anymore, as I said, trying to get off of it. But yeah, I do that's have. Okay. I do have Hail Tory on Instagram, which so is my last name and my first name there on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But you know, follow. Right now, I'm working on quite a bit since I'm kind of you know relatively new. I started in December for Therabody. Now January is when I started full time. And so it's only been a couple of months, but I think there's a lot of cool things coming down the pipeline. And as long as I'm here, I want to help that be like where I channel my energy instead of my own social right now. I want it to be on something that's a bigger platform that has a big audience. Yeah. And if that becomes a reflection of mine, great. But I think following Therabody University, because we'll have to get you on there. Dr. Jay and I are starting the Therabody University podcast here soon. So we'll have to follow that and check that out. So we'll have... A lot of postings from that. I think the strategy and the messaging there is going to be really fun and really palpable. I think, thank you for this conversation, first and foremost. So I want to say that. And like, thank you so much for sparking this and having such a great journey to bring tied into the hero's journey. And I think these are great avenues to, and outlets to share that with so many people. And I'm so excited for that to be another avenue to get that message out. And so that's going to be, I think, a great way to follow it is Therabody University. And of course, Therabody. Um, 
And if there's anything that we can do for the product side, you can always just reach out and direct message me. I'm still, still have the Instagram active. So if you want to learn more about Therabody or get directed to education there, great. But we'll be having a lot more wellness stuff here in the future. We're expanding into that. We just defined wellness for us as a company like in the last week. And now we'll be building all the content around that to help mind, body, spirit. So I think there's a lot of cool stuff on this path. And tying it back into one of the things I want to allude to, it's a passion project for you, getting into helping kids as well, move well and play well. So that I think that there's some cool, exciting stuff on that front coming down the pipeline. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to seeing their body university as it develops. And um, your guys' flagship product right now is the Theragun, I believe, correct? Did you, yes, I think you have one with you there. Do you want to show us what that is? Yeah. And, um, what model is that one and what are the different models available if someone wants to get a hold of one to attend to their recovery yeah uh, this one's the theragun elite this is the i think the high-end one for self-care mm -hmm. uh that's what these ones are designed for there's, there's the elite and the prime which is more meant for self-care and then we have the pro line which is amazing but it's definitely meant for commercial it's, it's commercial grade and it has an adjustable arm because like I use the pro as well, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely meant for dropping. It has texture on there. So that way your hands don't get tired when you're applying it to other people. So that one's more meant for in a chiropractic or a practitioner's setting where they can apply it to other people. Mm -hmm. um, but all of them have the highest torque out of any device on the market. So that means like if I'm pushing on it when it gets started, it's not going to stall out. So if you're a big, stronger guy, especially you want to get deep in the muscles, then you need something that's stronger. The Elite's a little bit stronger than the Prime, but they're still all like the strongest ones in the market. What makes us unique, and that's why the Theragun was the first one in here, is it's not like a tomahawk, like everything else, where it's just a T. This was designed with the user in mind, where you can grip it here, you can grip it here, you can grip it here if you need to get around somewhere else. You can also grip it on the base and different directions on the base to reach the hard to reach areas. And like I showed you when I first picked it up, it's perfectly balanced. So I can actually turn on the motor and just float it over my muscles and it won't be balancing around. The whole goal there being that you shouldn't need percussive therapy after using percussive therapy. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of the T design ones, you do because it puts so much torque on the wrist because you have to change the angle to get it there. And it's yeah. also bouncing off there and putting all this tension right here, as opposed to perfectly balanced motor and the motor going up and down and I can just float it across the muscles wherever I feel the tension and pain. Of mm -hmm. course, you need to grip it for other times, but it still stays flat. It doesn't like bounce off and I put that tension on there. So that's one mm -hmm. of the things that's unique about us. And of course we have Bluetooth now that you can pair to the app and we give you suggested routines on anything that you can think of. We have work from home and wellness. We have golf warmups and protocols, basketball. We have ailment specific for tendonitis, elbow, like, uh, plantar fasciitis, calf strains, what, what have you. All of it is built into the app. So I think the ecosystem is there to support. So we have that, those two, which are very similar in design. This one just has a little bit more features and a, and a nice case versus the Prime. Yeah. We have the Theragun Mini, which is this little tiny triangle and it's just like perfect for travel. So that way you can fit it inside your gym bag or for females like purse or something like that, backpack. Um, it's great. Like I'm going to fly on Monday to Chicago and I'm definitely taking that guy with me on the plane. So that way when I'm getting tight in the plane, I can just use that bad boy to open it up. And then of course we have like um, our pneumatic compression, which is being relaunched next Thursday. Everybody knows that we own them, but we have recovery air. It's kind of the rebrand relaunch on April 1st for uh, pneumatic compression, legs, sleeves, hips, arms. And then we have the only USDA certified organic CBD, which I know will be we're, we're working on Canada, but you guys are so strict on regulations. We're still working on it. Yeah, we are. Uh, well, I look it's forward. Up. I look I forward say, to continue. You'll go ahead and tour. Sorry. Oh, no, you're good. I was just going to say, it's like, I think we'll get there and we'll be one of the first ones. I learned through this through our own education that 70% of all CBD is imported from China. Um, and they use it to clean up the toxins in the soil because hemp is such an absorbent plant. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what you're getting in your CBD. And ours is all, we own the seed the soil and we own every part of the manufacturing process. It's all manufactured here in Colorado uh, and the United States here and here in Colorado. So it's the only USDA certified organic CBD on the market. So hopefully we can expand to China, but uh, 
the first thing we have actually have is a massage chain that's uh, doing a, t a test pilot in Canada. What we're doing right now for Theragun usage with LMTs, licensed massage therapists. So that's kind of oh, exciting wow. thing too. Yeah. So much exciting so, things on the way. Yeah, and yeah. they can I mean, like find 10, that 10 more your, coming. And they can find that on your website. Is it therabody.com? Is that the website where the, all these products are available? Yep. yep. Right. And on. then we have the education and, and link to the university there, uh, which will be new and more and more content all the time for excellent and to close every episode we bring our fists together for digital fist bump welcome Ooh. to the winner circle tori hale thank you so much for Appreciate this conversation you, thank you man it's a grateful to be here yeah until we see each other again